Collagen is one of the latest buzzwords in skin health. You might find collagen drinks, creams, and supplements in the market. But what is collagen really? And why is it important to our body? On the program today, we'll break down the functions of the collagen in our body and share some ways on how to increase natural collagen production. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome to MedDoc Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Our guests are here today to help us understand what collagen really is. With us is Dr. Charles Abraham Villamin. He's an orthopedic surgeon from the University of Santo Tomas Hospital. We're also joined by Dr. Raiza Francisco Pachon, who is a dermatologist at Skin Dermatology and Laser Center and U Plus Intelligent Aesthetics. Thank you both for joining us on the program. So collagen is our focus for this episode because a lot of our viewers are calling in and asking really if the collagen that they get from different uh, sources is that effective. So uh, collagen is one of the most abundant proteins in the human body. It's found in our bones, our muscles, our skin, especially our tendons. Now, collagen is also the substance that holds the body together, forming a sort of scaffold to provide strength as well as structure. Dr. Charles, when someone sees the word collagen, what exactly is it? Collagen is a major protein that's found in all your connective tissues. It's a very general term. So it goes with your bone, with your tendons, with the, with the lining of your organs. So it's a very general term. And most of the collagen that we talk about in public space is the collagen type 1, which is the one is found in our bone, in our muscles, in our tendons. But the other one is a collagen type 2, which is found in the end of the joints or the cartilage. That's another type of collagen. There are actually so many types of collagen in the body. So there's actually some around at least four types of collagen in our body. Here we're talking about types 1 and 2 found in our bones, connective tissue, and we're also going to talk about type 3 collagen, which is found in our skin. Dr. Raiza, when we talk about collagen in our skin, what are we talking about here? What is its main function? And so our skin has three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous tissue, or where the fat is. Majority of the collagen in our skin, it's found in the dermis, that's the middle layer. And more than 80% of the collagen found in the dermis is type 1 collagen. Dr. Raisa, is this collagen one of the reasons why some people have that youthful low appearance that is associated a lot with uh, beauty products? Well, much of what we associate with youth no, is can be attributed to collagen because it gives our skin suppleness and firmness. But uh, what we should know is that beginning in our 20s, we start to see a decrease in collagen. In fact, 1% of our collagen is lost every year starting in our 20s. So we'll talk more about that, the collagen in our skin later on. But marami, Dr. Charles, really don't uh, notice kapag maganda ang collagen nila with all of this. But when, when there is a deficiency in collagen, what are some of the more prevalent symptoms uh, that is noticed. If you go to take it to the extreme, no, there are some genetic diseases that doesn't make your body form a proper collagen. You know, genetic diseases like your Marfan syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, you have laxity of the joints, you have brittleness of the bone. So this is extreme. But there's another extreme, the more common part of collagen deficiency, yung pagtumatanda na tayo, there's especially in the joints, no, in the cartilage, because of the wear and tear, of our, of our joints, uh, there's also thinning of the cartilage. You start to have bone pains, you have you start to have joint pains, and that's the one that we see you in the elderly. Now, Dr. Charles, could you talk more about how is collagen naturally synthesized sa katawan ng isang tao? They're made by fibroblasts, which are found everywhere in our body. That's, that's how the body makes the collagen. In the bones, in the tendons, when they break, they usually heal, no? but in the joints, they do not usually heal. Kaya yung cartilage could be a different, but very difficult to treat kasi once they're destroyed, they don't heal by themselves. They, they don't get the natural state of the cartilage. Dr. Raiza, let's talk about the collagen in our skin. You mentioned at a certain age, that's when collagen starts to slow down in production. Are there any other reasons why this would happen aside from age or someone getting older? Yes, there are several extrinsic factors which cause collagen breakdown. 
Some of these are stress, smoking, pollution, inadequate nutrition, or an unhealthy diet. And the number one cause of collagen breakdown in the skin is actually UV or ultraviolet or sun exposure. So unprotected sun exposure actually causes a lot of your collagen to break down. So the skin becomes, you know, leathery or saggy. The skin is also thinned out. Wrinkles are more pronounced. There's also, of course, uh, pigment irregularities with very sun-exposed skin. Now, Dr. Charles, when it comes to our bones and muscles, what are some external factors that may contribute to the loss or the degradation of collagen production? Collagen are naturally produced in our body. As long as our bones and muscles are healing, they should be okay. No, they should be present in our body. Once the joints, the, the cartilage is degenerated already, they don't, they don't heal like our, our bones and muscles. Okay, when you talk about the cartilage in our joints, when they don't heal, when they're injured, what are some of the things that we do? Some people may not notice that they're actually injuring the cartilage, that, uh, the covering made out of collagen. One of the uh, results of having a denuded or a damaged cartilage, you can have arthritis. And the most common form of arthritis still is yung osteoarthritis that we see, mm-hmm. among, especially among our elderly. So ang advice natin among patients with osteoarthritis is, number one, we want them to be active. So once you start being uh, sedentary, magkakaroon ng stiffness ng joints natin. Get a proper diet and exercise. Keep your flexibility, keep your, keep your mobility uh, with the joints. Now, collagen is vital for the health of every system in our body. When we come back, we'll talk about the food sources of collagen and the supplements. This is MedTalk Health Talk. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk, where caring is our calling. Now let's discuss some of the nutrients that can contribute to the natural synthesis of your collagen or your body producing its own collagen. Dr. Riza, when it comes to a good diet that can address or not hasten the degradation of collagen in our skin, what kind of diet are we looking at? A healthy, well-balanced diet is enough to give your body the building blocks to build its own natural collagen. No, Sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking that we need fancy diets. No, we just need a really mm-hmm. well-balanced diet, a diet that consists of good protein because collagen is a protein, right? So we get our protein from sources such as fish, chicken, lean meats, uh, also beans. Also, a part of the synthesis of collagen, the body needs vitamin C, zinc, and copper. So these can be found in fruits, vegetables, mineral-rich foods such as shellfish. Since we're talking about our skin and the proper diet to keep our skin healthy, are there things, Dr. Riza, that our viewers should absolutely avoid? Well, yes, I think so. Especially in recent years, um, there has been research into the effects of sugar being pro-inflammatory and aiding the glycation process, which helps to degrade collagen. No? So high sugar, high glycemic index food, less than that. Now, Dr. Charles, with regards to the diet demand for bone strength, joint strength, connective tissue strength, what can you advise our viewers? It's actually very basic. No? You just have to have a, a balanced diet, a good diet, uh, as long as you have the proper amino acids, the proper proteins, vitamin C and zinc, as Dr. Rice has mentioned you're able to produce your own collagen. The other important thing is also a proper exercise because again, you have to, it's your muscles and bones have to be used so that they can have, they can gain strength. As long as you have a proper exercise, you put pressure in your muscles and bones, you can have a very strong muscle and bones. That same goes to the joint. Their joint needs to be used in order for them to be healthy because once you don't use an inflamed joint, especially with arthritis, they become stiff and it, it decreases to weakening of the joints also. Dr. Charles, you mentioned not using Uh, an inflamed joint such as someone with arthritis. How can someone with arthritis still continue to move that joint for its health, but at the same time try and minimize the pain associated uh, with such? The first is we have to know what's the cause of your arthritis. So there are many causes of arthritis. Still the most common is osteoarthritis or the wear and tear. But as you mentioned, there are autoimmune diseases. You have uh, gout. So you have to first zero in on the reason why you're having this arthritis. Once you figure out 
how to prevent the inflammation and pain, then you can start moving because once you stop moving your joints, what will happen is it becomes stiff and muscles and bones around it will weaken. Okay, so very important, especially those who are feeling arthritis, to seek consult. Seek consult with your rheumatologist, with your orthopedic uh, doctor to get proper treatment. Now, Dr. Riza, one of the latest trends, especially among Filipinos, is the use of thermal fillers especially to address certain aesthetic features. Let's talk about the safety of this and when fillers normally used and what is it used to address? In general, dermal fillers are used to add volume, plump up the skin, improve skin structure because as we age, collagen decreases. There's also bone resorption. So our bones get smaller, actually. There's also fat loss in our faces. So as we get older, our faces tend to look more hollow. And dermal fillers help to address that concern. Now, Dr. Charles, when it comes to our bones once again and joints, and we're talking about collagen loss or the need to replace collagen, can this be addressed solely on oral types of sources for collagen? major market nowadays. Now, there are many different supplements in the market because, well, none of them really, as of now, they're still regarded as supplements. There's mm-hmm. no real cure. If we're going to address the specific arthritis, some say that they help in arthritis, there's some evidence that they may probably affect the inflammation itself rather than actually replacing your cartilage in your joints. Also, some say it's not actually replacing the cartilage in your joints. It's actually... Uh, trying to enrich the fluid around the joints, but not really replacing the cartilage itself in our joints. Dr. Charles, can trauma to the joints be cumulative over time? Are certain sports that have been played by when someone was younger sort of creep up when they become older? Uh, uh, sports that are hard on the knees, that are that are hard on the joints, can this be a cumulative factor later on in life? That's actually correct. No? Uh, there's such a thing as traumatic arthritis. If you have a vehicle accident, for example, and your joints have been damaged, they can contribute to an early osteoarthritis. But that's also correct. Some athletes, especially those who have very uh, high-impact joint activities, they can have uh, early onset arthritis also. So our advice usually is you have to have a variation of activity. So if you like running, you have to, you might have to, you might want to do biking or swimming to lessen the impact on How your important, joints. Dr. Charles, is recovery time also with regards to the health of our joints? Recovery uh, would entail that you let our body go. Because if you have an intense activity, you have inflammation in our joints. Mm-hmm. Uh, inflammation degrades cartilage. So we don't want that. We don't want further degradation for cartilage. Recovery, it lessens your inflammatory uh, cytokine in your joints. That's why we want to recover so that there will be no further inflammation inside the joint, thus preventing uh, further damage to your joints. Now, age-related collagen loss is inevitable and it's part of growing old. But it is possible to slow down that process. When we return, we'll talk about how you can manage collagen loss. Network Health Talk will be right back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. So early on in the show, we mentioned that diet and other lifestyle factors can significantly affect your body's collagen production. Now, the effects of collagen supplements continue to be researched and debated. A word of caution when it comes to these supplements as well as other forms that tout that they are collagen enhancers. Let's talk about that, Dr. Raiza. Many products are out there that say that collagen can be replaced with a topical form of product. Is this true? Actually, that's one of the big misconceptions, that collagen can come in the form of a cream. There are a lot of creams containing collagen, but at best, they can moisturize your skin. The problem is because that collagen, it's a big molecule. So usually, if it's contained in a cream, it probably won't be absorbed into your skin. But we have other topical products that can help your body to stimulate collagen, such as retinoids, the vitamin A family, um, vitamin C, glycolic acid. There are other topicals that have effectively stimulated collagen. Now, when it comes to tried and proven ways 
Are there any other procedures that would enhance someone's skin, be stimulated to produce more collagen? Well, actually, yes. It's an exciting time now to be aging gracefully because mm-hmm. there are a lot of non-invasive um, alter, uh, options in your doctor's office to stimulate collagen. Some of these, of course, you would best be in a discussion with your dermatologist or doctor as to what is best suited for you. But some of the options available now are, for example, microneedling, which is collagen induction, wherein you wound the skin with tiny needles, and that stimulates your body to produce collagen. Chemical peels also help. There are also lasers, laser treatments, a lot of laser treatments that can stimulate collagen. There are also non-laser devices such as radio frequency, uh, high intensity focused ultrasound that also help. Chemical peels also help. Um, Dermal fillers, uh, protein threads, there are a lot now. But what is important for our viewers to understand is before you try any of these procedures, seek consult to your board certified dermatologist so for proper guidance and so they can show you what procedures can give you the maximum results. Now, Dr. Charles, with regards to collagen in our joints, connective tissues as well, many are asking, pwede ba itong ma-inject? Because there are a lot uh, that say that uh, collagen can be injected directly into the joints. Is there any truth to this? Yeah, actually, we, nowadays, uh, we, have, we have injections at the joint. Uh, uh, I think the most commonly used uh, injection is the hyaluronic injection. It's actually a filler. So since your cartilage doesn't really heal that well, you put a hard gel inside the joint, so it will become a cushion in between your bones. And that can reduce the pain inside the joint. What's the best way, Dr. Charles? What can you advise our viewers in how to protect their joints, how to keep their connective tissues healthy? If you have a good nutrition, get a proper amino acids, vitamin C, and zinc, uh, you are able to produce your your uh, your collagen in your body. With, with, in terms of the, the joint, um, always a proper exercise. So you don't want high impact activities uh, so that you preserve the, the cartilage in your joint. So the low impact activities are swimming, walking, and biking. Maintain a proper exercise in your everyday activity. Dr. Raiza, let's remind our viewers again how to keep that skin healthy, how to keep that youthful glow, And what should they be wary about, especially when seeking products for their skin? Well, for your skin, I think the number one thing that you can do to help maintain and keep your collagen is to use a daily sunscreen. Avoid excessive sun exposure because, as we know, that's the number one cause of collagen degradation. Also, of course, maintain a healthy diet, reduce stress, don't smoke. If you're smoking, quit smoking. See your dermatologist for any in-office options that you would like to consider. Thank you, orthopedic surgeon Dr. Charles Villamin and dermatologist Dr. Raisa Francisco Pachon for being with us today and sharing your tips and expertise about collagen. Aging is a natural part of life, but it is understandable that some people would like to keep that youthful look. So as long as you have a proper diet, live a healthy lifestyle and seek consultation with your board certified dermatologist and your orthopedic surgeon there's nothing wrong with wanting to look and feel good about yourself i'm dr freddy gomez and thank you for watching that talk health talk we'll see you again next time